bodyweight chin-ups versus bodyweight pull-ups. With a chin-up, you maintain an underhand grip and typically keep the elbows closer to your body. While with a pull-up, you maintain an overhand grip and the elbows are often more flared while doing the exercise. These two exercises mostly activate the same muscles. With both chin-ups and pull-ups, you will train the lats, upper back, biceps, brachialis and brachioradialis. But there is a key difference in terms of which muscles are emphasized when comparing the chin-up and pull-up. First of all, different back muscles are being trained. When you maintain an underhand grip and keep the elbows more tucked during a chin-up, naturally the resistance will move more in line with your lat muscles. Because the main function of your lats is to extend the shoulder, shoulder extension is trained very well on the chin-up. While with the pull-up, you naturally keep the elbows more flared, which aligns the resistance more with upper back muscles like your traps, rhomboids and teres major, as supported by research. But next to back development, the differences that come from changing wrist position are also important to mention. The wrist has an attachment to the biceps through the distal biceps tendon. When I supinate the wrist, my biceps get worked. During a chin-up, you maintain this supinated position, meaning that the biceps are contracting harder during a chin-up. This is supported by muscle activation research as well. Now with the pull-up, you maintain an overhand grip, which trains your biceps in a similar way as a hammer curl. Because you maintain an overhand grip, the brachialis and brachioradialis muscles around the biceps are being trained harder. So if we compare the chin-up and pull-up from a helicopter view, the chin-up helps you train your lats harder, arguably contributing more to your back width. At the same time, with the supinated position, your biceps are being trained harder, making the biceps look more developed from the front. While with the pull-ups, you train the upper back muscles more, resulting in improved back muscle thickness. Also, the muscles surrounding your biceps are being trained harder during a pull-up, making your arms look more developed from the side. So depending on your training goal, you can decide whether to prioritize chin-ups or pull-ups in your routine. Make sure you stick around until the end of this video because I will be showing you a way how you can incorporate both movements into your training program. Now, before we move into how to design your workout routine, I do want to mention that in the fitness space, the benefits that chin-ups have for your biceps development are highly underrated. If we look at the athletes that tend to have the biggest biceps, it tends to be gymnasts, with the biceps of top gymnasts looking almost as impressive as top natural bodybuilders. This is for a specific reason. With the chin-ups, you can heavily overload the bicep muscle. Doing bicep curls is awesome, but there's only so much resistance you can place on the biceps here. The performance of a heavy compound exercise will always be the top way to develop any muscle group, including isolation muscle groups like the bicep. Previously, it was thought that chin-ups is not that effective for biceps muscle growth because with the chin-up, you train your biceps while the shoulder's in a flexed position. The long head of the biceps has an attachment to the shoulder. Theoretically, flexing your biceps while placing the arm in an overhand position would result in less bicep stimulation since the biceps are in a more shortened position. But from new research, we know that the biceps are minimally involved during shoulder flexion movements, so your biceps are not weaker when you train them in this overhead position. In fact, the biceps are one of the key contributors during a chin-up. This explains why gymnasts have such jacked biceps. So if you're looking to pump those arms up, look into mastering your chin-up game before doing all types of bicep curl variations. For those that cannot do chin-ups or pull-ups yet, I would suggest starting with mastering one variation first. Most people are stronger in a chin-up when they start training. This is because both the back and biceps get to contribute to the movement, allowing you to get your first chin-up faster. But you can start practicing the variation that aligns most with your training goals. Let's say I want to get my first pull-up. Step 1 is to work on being able to pull down between 65-70% to of your body weight to build up foundational pulling strength. If you cannot handle lifting more than 60% of your weight on a pull down, doing a pull up can be risky because it involves a lot more resistance than your body can handle at the moment. Step 2 once you've got the pull downs covered is to work your way up to doing 8 inverted row repetitions with the bar around the height of your hips. Once the inverted rows are mastered, step 3 is to work on doing 6 negative pull up repetitions in which you start at the top of a pull up and aim to lower yourself down in about 2 seconds. Now, in the next progression, you should be able to do at least 2-3 to three clean pull up repetitions. So you simply train the pull up now and aim to increase your repetitions over time. Once you get over 10 repetitions on the pull up, it's time to grab a belt and start doing weighted pull ups. There is another variation of the pull-up we haven't discussed yet, but it's very much worth mentioning. And that is the neutral grip pull-up. This is a middle ground between the chin-up and pull-up. The neutral grip allows you to maintain a narrow elbow positioning comfortably. Because your hands are in this neutral position, your biceps are not being trained as hard, but that could be a good thing. If you really want to focus on back width, the neutral grip pull-up would be my go-to exercise since the lats are the main contributors and the biceps are less of a limiting factor. 
Because you can train a wide variety of muscles with chin-ups and pull-ups, I recommend that most people incorporate both variations into their routine. If you maintain an upper-lower split with two upper body days per week, your training could look something like this. As you see, the chin-ups and pull-ups can be part of a balanced training program that works all major muscle groups. Based on your training experience, you can replace a pull-up with a light pull-down or negative pull-up if you're in the process of getting your first pull-up repetition. And that was it for today's video. If you have any questions about your pull-up progression, definitely leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And then we'll see you in the next one.